Let's get the Yukiba Tri to the LGR, the want to know to the Iron Blood to the Detailist. Why had I never heard of this until recently? This is Iron Blood, published in 1996 by Microforum and developed by Family Production Incorporated. Hmm, maybe that's why I hadn't heard of it. As far as company names go, it's hard to think of one more drab than Family Production. But while it may sound like a group of stay-at-home moms, FamPro was a fascinating game developer. They were based in South Korea for one thing, were quite prolific in DOS PC game creation, and during the 90s a few of their properties actually made it overseas. Through a deal with the Canada-based Microforum, three of Family Pro's games got English localizations. Shaki the Wolf, Rebel Runner, and Iron Blood. I'd heard murmurs of those first two, yet I'd never once heard of Iron Blood until I ran across this box copy from Expert Software. As soon as I saw the box art and took a look at the screenshots on the back, I was psyched. It just screams mid-90s arcade goodness. This expert version of the game simply comes with a CD and a jewel case, relying on a readme file instead of a proper manual, so that sucks, but at least it's got a nice shiny box. Box. Ferrum Plasma starts up with this manga looking chick alongside a few setup options, and in a somewhat unusual move, there's only support for Sound Blaster sound. It's either that or nothing, so suck it, Media Vision fanboys. After some logo animations, Iron Blood unironically fades in its name on top of the main menu. Uh, this is the North American version, of course, but the original from Korea was titled Interrupt, and I have no idea what the name change was for. Seems kind of silly. Anyway, from the menu, it looks an awful lot like a classic 16-bit console game, right down to the music and sound tests in the options menu. Selecting Game Start will provide you with two beefy robots, the RG-104 Cyber Troll and the SG-43 Ripple. These mecha have their own pilots, and there's a pretty involved backstory in the manual, but all you need to know is that the red one is slow and stronger, while the blue one is fast and weaker. The game itself plays in drastically different ways depending on your robotic preferences, but either way, you'll be battling through six levels divided up into several stages each. Initially, these levels play like a side-scrolling action arcade game, and a particularly weak one at that. Your weapons feel underpowered, and the enemy's attacks seem really cheap. But let me tell you, Iron Blood is a game where first impressions mean basically nothing, because the good stuff is drip-fed to you slowly slowly as you play. Your mecha is totally crap at first because you have to find power-ups, and these will drop from certain enemies as you kill them. So while you can just breeze through a level dodging everything, you'll be severely underpowered if you do this by the time you get around to the next stage. Like any good arcade game, it's imperative that you memorize how each enemy moves and which enemies will drop power-ups and health packs. It's not always intuitive either, especially on the shoot 'em up stages. Oh yeah, sometimes the game will change styles completely, switching over to a spaceship shooter. It's a pretty tough one too, with the sprites being so large that it feels cumbersome at first. But once you figure out that many of the ships won't hurt you if you touch them, and doing this and killing them up close is key to collecting power-ups and health before they fall off the screen, it's pretty awesome. It's also got this thing where you have separate keys for firing left and firing right, which I'm glad for because having a key to toggle directions is bothersome to me. The other big thing that gives Iron Blood its personality is that the two playable robots change the pacing of the game completely depending on which one you choose. The red one is all about bursts of power and doing damage from a distance, being equipped with a jetpack, guns, bombs, and a crazy powerful punch. But everything with this guy is slower and more methodical, from aiming your guns to using the jetpack. The blue bot is all about twitchy speed and melee attacks, making use of a double jump and a lightsaber of sorts to rapidly strike down foes up close. Not only are these differences just a matter of preference, but each mecha is better suited to certain stages and boss battles. The red one is more well-rounded when it comes to fighting on the ground, but the blue one is more nimble at dodging attacks, especially in the shoot-em-up sections. Seeing as the game is about half and half between these two types of gameplay, it's really fun to play around and see which one works better for you overall. 
There are also some elements that help balance the two styles, like the power-up which temporarily gives you a powerful autonomous drone, and a few levels that differ depending on your robot. But for the most part, it's up to you to learn the two completely different strategies for each protagonist. And man, I think this is just awesome. It's one of those games where each time I play, I get just a bit further than last time if I'm really paying attention, and I love when an arcade game rewards you for skill like that. It's not always fair with the hit detection, and sometimes it's downright infuriating to die in the same spot over and over, but it only fills me with resolve to do better next time. Iron Blood is a pretty excellent little action game in my book, and I'm sure if it was in an arcade when I was a kid, then I would have lost hundreds of quarters gladly to it. Come to think of it, the graphics and sound seem like something straight off of a CP system arcade board, and I love that. Yeah, that's one sexy FM soundtrack. Now, while the music is good, the main thing that I wish was improved are the sound effects, because half the stuff sounds really tinny, and the other half is just, uh, not there. Oh yeah, and the fact that you only have a few continues before getting a game over, that just annoys me in a home computer game where you can't insert more credits. Uh, well, anyway, that's Iron Blood. It's neat, and I like it, and it makes me want to dive deeper into the world of Korean PC stuff. Maybe there are way better DOS games from Korea in this vein, but dude, this one impressed me, and it's still worth playing, so track it down and give it a shot if you ever have the chance. Well, that was the, uh, that looks as, the game's obviously the pretty polish and very neat. And I, I haven't seen this before. But um, Hunter's World Gaming would recommend it to play this uh, Iron Blood. This what the game's detail look like. The 16-bit console style is made look like a Super Nintendo and PlayStation's. Man, I never heard of the game before. But this year, I managed to have the gun to play this game.